I've worked as a professional freelance model maker for, for about 24 years now. Worked on a couple of TV series, Space Precinct, Red Dwarf 8. Film-wise, I worked on Space Truckers, Thunderbirds, Five Children in It, Aliens vs Predator, Die Another Day, and a lot of adverts in between, and uh, architectural work just to keep me going. One of my inspirations was Ridley Scott um, with the film Blade Runner. Um, I sort of knew that they were models, but I didn't quite know how to get into it. Jerry Anderson as well, from a very early age. For some reason, I just latched onto the sort of model making side of it. Fireball XL5 and watching the spaceship go up the ramp and this sort of thing. I applied at Medway and St Albans and got in at St Albans and then did two years there and then went out into architectural model making because I didn't assume for a minute that you could waltz straight out of college into films. I did about seven years in the sort of real world as it were and then started to hoof it around the studios in my portfolio and I have a sort of penchant for doing this sort of stuff anyway, sort of sci-fi and uh, got in with Bill Pearson who's at uh, Shepperton Studios and it just went on from there really. If we're to dress something, which is quite a lot of what I've been doing over the years, where they haven't got the time to design every little thing, then you go to car boot sales and you buy old toys and you butcher them and you change them around and spray them and so people don't recognise them. You're just on the lookout for interesting shapes or quite high detail on them and you get value out of it straight away then. You haven't had to make a panel with detail on it. It's already got the detail on it so you just stick it on and so that saves us a lot of time. Bits off toys, probably that are no longer made because most toys, you know, they're in the shops for a couple of years and then they're gone. So I've collected these over the years. Um, we pour rubber over that and uh, make moulds. So we've got something then we can repeat what the talcum powder does is um, the particles of the talcum powder will burst any of the tiny bubbles that you get. Uh, this is if you don't have an extractor, I don't. Polyester resin, part A and part B, which you mix 50-50. I've just put them up to 50 milligrams there. And there's your two parts. Which you mix together. And then we pour into the mould. Now you've got about, probably about a minute before you lose your watery consistency. Here's some I did earlier. And as you can see, they, um, they come out, all the detail is there. There's no air bubbles. And um, basically that's ready for plastic primer now. I still don't think I've seen a model yet which um, has been rendered in the computer and looks totally believable. You can somehow always tell that it's CG. Um, I don't know whether that's down to the weathering of it or what, or it's just the fact that it's a real object being filmed. It always looks real, but what happens now is, because everybody knows about CGI, it kind of double underlines the fact that when it's not CGI, it's a model. And people say, oh, don't the models look good? Well, you shouldn't be thinking in those terms, really.